piece can turn into a spontaneous photo shoot. Your friends, your parents, even strangers snap away like a paparazzi. And why? Because it's a special occasion? No, it's just Thursday. So these days, we see more and more people find themselves obsessing about their appearance and their shape and their weight. Posting a picture online leads to brand new questions. People ask themselves, does my butt really look like that? They see their body from a brand new perspective. So what is this age of social media doing to us? What is happening now that we are constantly confronted by this stream of images? Is it making us vain and shallow? Is it making us obsessed with our appearance? Now 20% of college students report that they are worried about their body image and their body flaws. So are we becoming like Narcissus, who you see here? He was the beautiful Greek hunter who looked at his reflection in the mirror or in the pool of water here and fell in love. He lost the will to live. Are we becoming narcissists in love with our selfie? As a therapist, I would hear from my patients how incredibly strange it can feel to see your body online. And if I'm being completely honest, I notice the effect that it has on me. Pinterest inspired me to put on this race and Spanx to come talk to you today. But at the same time, people would describe how scary it felt and how exposed and vulnerable and imperfect they would feel. A negative comment in real life might come and go. It would last just a few minutes, and maybe one or two people would hear it. But a negative comment online could be seen by hundreds or even thousands, and people described feeling incredibly embarrassed and ashamed. We also see more and more that people, we see these new videos to become shredded and contour. There are new surgical procedures to lift and fill. So what is this constant stream of images? How is it affecting us? Now social media can also have positives. Sometimes people report that They'll feel reassured by the number of likes they get on a picture they post on Facebook. Or posting a picture on Tinder and the number of people who swipe right can reassure them and calm their fears about being attractive and lovable enough. And as a researcher, I really want to know how to respond to these concerns. I want to know what to tell my patients and what to tell the public. Can, do I tell everyone, just take down your social media accounts, avoid it, avoid pictures like the plague? Should I scream at everyone, self-care, not selfies? <laughs> so as a researcher, I decided to study online body comparisons. I wanted to know if this constant exposure to our bodies was changing how we thought and felt, and whether it was causing more um, dissatisfaction with our appearance than ever before. I wanted to know whether it was connected to dangerous dieting or hating our bodies. And what I found in our, our study um, with my colleagues was really surprising. It wasn't the number of friends that people had, it wasn't the number of followers they had that really mattered. Um, in fact, it was really how people spent time online. It was how they used social media that was the most important. In my TEDx UNC talk, I want to tell you four different steps you can take to have a healthy body image online. It is so critical in this age of digitally enhanced selfies and the hashtag body goals that we 
find ways of appreciate and love our bodies. Thank you.